This is Professor Hildebrandt with an example from Chapter 9. Um, in Chapter 9, we introduced quite a few equations, so I want to explain some of these. Um, one of the really important relationships here is our marginal propensity to consume and the marginal propensity to save. And these really just go back to disposable income. So but going back to the circular flow that we looked at, in Chapter 6, disposable income that um, households have is divided between consumption and saving. So DI equals C plus S, that's an equation you definitely need to know. Because of this relationship, this means that any change in disposable income, whether that's an increase or a decrease, will equal some change in consumption plus some change in savings. Okay. So the MPC plus the MPS, um, those will always be either fractions or um, decimals because all of our income is either spent or saved. So our MPC here is going to tell us the amount of our new income that we spend and then the MPS will tell us the amount of new income that we save. Um, and so we have one final relationship down here, the fraction of income spent plus the fraction of income saved forever and always will equal one. Again, I would make sure to write down all of these equations. They will help with work that you're going to do in chapters 9, 10, and 11 um, from the textbook. So I'm going to work through a couple of quick examples related to this. So here's example number one. So we'll call this example one. Okay. Suppose that savings increases by $200 when disposable income increases by $800. And then I ask you to find the MPS. So this one's pretty straightforward. Remember, our equation for MPS is simply the change in savings over the change in disposable income. So we just plug in our numbers here, $200 divided by 800, okay? And so those zeros would cancel each other out. Two goes into itself one time, two goes into eight four times. And so our MPS is one over four or one fourth. Notice I could have made it a little more complicated though. So instead of asking you to tell me the MPS from the beginning, I could have asked you instead to find the MPC. Now, if you were to do that, you could have done it a couple of different ways. The first way is you could have done everything I've done so far. You could have found this um, MPS of one fourth, and then using the equation MPC plus MPS equal one, you would plug in your MPS of one fourth and set that equal to one and so then found that our MPC is three fourths. The second way though that you could have done that since you know that savings is 200 when disposable income is 800 that means our change in consumption must be 600. So then you could use the MPC equation change in consumption 600 over change in disposable income 800 and if you broke that down you would still get the same answer as three-fourths. So one nice thing about a lot of the problems in these chapters is there's often more than one way to do them. So you can work it one way and then work it the second way and make sure that your answers line up. So here's the second example that we're gonna work. This one's a little bit more complicated. So here you're told that your MPC is 0 0.6 and disposable income increases by $1,500. And you're asked to find the change in savings. Again, there's more than one way to work this, but for me, I'm gonna start by figuring out what my MPS would be, okay? Because I know my MPS is my change in savings, what I'm trying to find, over my change in disposable income, which I know is this 1500 here, okay? Well, how do I find my MPS? Well, since the MPC plus MPS equal one, and my MPC is 0.6, then I find that my MPS is 0 0.4. I'm actually gonna put this into a fraction because I believe doing this math, it's easier that way. The four is in the tenths position, so in a fraction form, this would be four tenths, which I can then reduce down to two fifths, okay? And now, let's get a new color here. Now I'm ready to find my change in savings. So again, I'm gonna use this equation here I know my MPS is two-fifths, so two-fifths equals my change in savings is my unknown, divided by this change in disposable income of 1,500. Don't get scared here, guys. It's not too bad. We're simply going to cross-multiply 
okay, across that uh, equal sign there. I'm actually not even going to multiply it all the way out. I'm just going to write it out. 5 times the change in savings equals 2 times 1,500. Okay, why did I not work it out yet? Because now I'm isolating this, so I'm going to divide both sides by 5. I know you guys love my technical math terms. The math people would probably kill me, but as long as you understand, that's what matters. So these two 5s cancel each other out. This 5 goes into 15 three times, and so I find my change in savings is 2 times 300 or $600, okay? And I'm not going to work this for you, but we could then um, take the $600 and say, okay, well, if the change in savings is 600 since disposable income is 15 the change in consumption would be 900 and 900 over 1500 is 3 fifths, which is equal to 0 0.6. So did we get back to where we started? Yes, we did.